Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I just want to quickly demonstrate how we can put Delta, Gamma, and Vanna levels on our chart to use for intraday trading. Before we get started, I'll leave several referral codes for trading services I use in the description, including TradyTix, Elite Trader Funding, and TradingView that will give us both discounts. Lastly, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. So in this case, I'm actually going to show this on Tesla. Now, you can do this for any ticker that TradyTix has options data for. And it's a really nice feature just to make gamma exposure levels and vanna levels and things like that easily consumable. And he and he and they even put in uh, delta, delta levels, which is really nice as well. So I'm not going to get into the nuances of all those Greeks because I've covered that in a previous video about options Greeks and dealer positioning. But... On the left hand side here, if we go to ticker dashboards and we go to stocks, you can search the, the ticker that in question that you want to do this for. And right here we'll see this nice price chart here that actually has quite a few features you can use to look at for technical trading when, you, when you're trading intraday. And right here, on, on if we make sure we want to set the time frame to five minutes, and then at that point we can choose Greek levels and we can actually choose we can choose gex spot gex which is something i will cover in a video in the future delta or vanna so i'm just going to put on delta and we can just see major levels where, where there's a large amount of delta being hedged and how price might react to that so then if we just choose all we'll put all the delta levels on here and we can actually see with the bars that just popped up that these actually work really well as as key levels so we can see when tesla was coming down here when we ended up breaking through this level, we actually hit a little bit of support right here. We ended up breaking through that and we did, and did end up holding this delta level. We even came above it and retested it. Now, this is older data, so some of this may have changed. But even still, we can see how between these two delta levels, we actually chopped around for a bit. And each time we tested a delta level... Uh, it either acted as support or resistance if we were under or over it. And then oftentimes when it would break, we would get a retest and then some sort of move higher. In some cases, we'd have several retests before eventually breaking that. And then, it, then as always, with any technical level you're looking at, whether it's supply and demand, support, resistance, whatever you want to call it, whenever it whatever was previously support will oftentimes act as resistance and vice versa. And so then we can see that we held a delta level at the bottom and you can actually just see how these have interacted with price and then you can even go in and export these to trading view if you use trading view which makes it really nice now we don't just have delta levels delta is one way to consume dealer positioning data but we can also look at gamma levels which is often used for the same reason and you can see that's a little easier to read and you can see also i see how price was reacting to those it actually does seem like in this case with tesla i mean we do have some nice interactions here with these uh these levels but it does seem like the the delta levels were working a little better in terms of how price was respecting them and you can also you can throw on multiple levels but the chart might get a little crowded like we can also throw on some banner levels here to see how that looks and it looks like in this case it, it didn't change much because chances are they're they're the same as some of these gex levels and, and there won't be as many of them but the thing i want to point out is actually what happens in between these delta levels because oftentimes when we're looking at delta we can when we're looking at these delta levels whenever we're in between a level so let's say back here we were playing this delta level and we were getting all these wicks that were confirming a hold up top and then we started falling below. This would be a great time to take a short and then we could have our exit already preset at the next delta level because yes, even though we do break through it and we get a, a low volume pivot before we do move through it, we can see that in between these levels is when price moves a bit easier than it does when we're actually at these levels. And we can even see that here where we have multiple levels, like a, a congested area of uh, delta levels we can see that price is very choppy and these are these are areas that we want to stay out but once we get a clean break of these levels that's the case where we right here we want to buy puts and take it all the way down so that's just that's just i just want to quickly go through this i'm not going to talk about the meaning behind them or anything like that because like i said i have covered this stuff in other videos but i just wanted to demonstrate how that looks here and 
These have been referred to by Trady Ticks as ghost zones. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that's a proprietary term or not, but basically when we're in these zones that are in between levels, that's where we can expect price to act more fluid than areas where we touch these levels where we're hitting support and resistance. And it makes it very easy to enter your trades when we when we see love one of those levels holding or one of those levels breaking whatever it might be and then exit at the next level and i'd recommend so if we did take a short let's say here off of when we had this big red candle it looked like we were going to actually break above and that's why it's always good to wait for some sort of retest because we can see it goes to break above i wouldn't recommend taking a long i'd wait for a retest and then enter but we immediately get shot back down which would be a great time to buy puts and then at that point, you could just exit your puts as soon as we get to the next delta level because we can expect price to move pretty fluid between these delta levels. And the same thing going back up, you could take calls again, exit the next delta level, take puts again, exit. And then eventually when we do get hung up uh, in these ghost levels, as at this point, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get out for, with some profit if it's coming against you or at least break even. And if you do take puts off of a certain level and it starts moving through with that with ease, meaning it's just blowing through, which there's not really any good examples of this here. But hypothetically, you could even use the levels that it's blowing through as an area to slide your stop. That way, if it does come back to that level, it will exit your position with some profit. But I just want to point this out because this is a cool new feature and an easy way to consume these. And on this same chart, which I've talked about in the past, you can also add dark pool levels and see how price is reacting to those, which oftentimes are pretty clean. And all of this can easily be exported to trading view. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you weren't aware of this feature, it's something that I intend to use for any tickers that I trade. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I appreciate you watching.